Hey kids, it's Mr. Hammond, and today we're going to be talking about an ecosystem and some of the words associated with ecosystem in order that we might understand how it's broken down from a large ecosystem into its smaller parts. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. These are new vocabulary words. We may have gone over them a little bit in class, but sometimes it helps me to draw pictures in order to really understand what words mean, and that's what we're doing today. So the title for this is going to be Graphic Organizer. of an ecosystem. There we go. Now I'm going to start by making a large triangle because that's what a graphic organizer is going to be. To do that, I want to find the middle of the page, which I can do by measuring out three and a quarter because I've already measured from the edge of my page to the red line. But in this case, another easy way to do it is just to take your paper and fold it in half. Don't crease it all the way down, just crease it at the top. Now I'm only folding it to the red line because I'm not going to use this space here on the side. Uh, it's just too hard to write around this area near the crease. And I'm going to make a dot right below that crease. Then I'm going to count down 20 lines. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And I'm going to go across and make a dot on either side of that blue line. Now, if you have college rule, you're going to have smaller, um, more narrow like lines. The lines are going to be closer together. So you're probably going to count out 25 lines. But I believe I have standard rule, so that's why I only count out 20. You want to do a multiple of 5 because we're going to divide this into 5 sections. And notice how I'm turning my page and making deep marks. It's always good to make a light mark first, just to make sure it's where you want it. That's where I want it, and I'm going to make it bold. There we go. And now I've got my triangle. Now, I turned it because it's easier to make the lines that way. So now I'm going to count up, turn it again, and count every five lines and draw, draw a line. Oh, wait, not five. If I have 20 lines, I need five sections. So 20 divided by five, that'd be four lines. Okay, one, two, three, four. It's always good to do your math correctly, right? One, two, three, four. And you're just making the lines on the blue line that's there. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. There we go. Yay! So, there are five levels. The first level right here is called the biosphere. Yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and put it over here. Now, I could have written it inside. That would have been fine, too. The biosphere is the largest thing we're talking about today, and I wanted to put the ecosystem in perspective to the rest of the world. So I'm actually going to draw a part of the world, and to do that, I'm going to draw, grab a bowl, or in this case, a fancy beaker, because I'm not really good with circles freehand in it. I don't know about you guys. And I'm going to use part of this to make what I would think would be the world kind of coming up from the bottom. And now I'm going to draw a picture of... North America coming down here, a little bit of Canada up there, going down, got a little bit of Florida, coming around Texas, going around to Central America. There we go. I've got Greenland. It's actually fairly big. And then I've got my picture of um, Europe going down here to Africa. That was not done the best. There we go. I did it better last time, and I say last time by meaning... Guys, this is my third time doing this. The first two times, the video just stopped on me. I don't know what's going on. So hopefully this one will stick. And that's going to be the first layer of, the, of what we're talking about, the biosphere. Now, the biosphere, can, can, <laughs> it has all living things in it. All the living things in this entire world are considered part of the biosphere. Now, the next thing we're talking about is an ecosystem. An ecosystem is made up of abiotic and biotic parts. So we're going to show that by drawing an ocean ecosystem, and it's going to be a very basic ocean ecosystem. I'm going to put some seaweed, and this will not be the scale, folks. Because <laughs> that's a living part, and then I'm going to have 
some living seaweed on the other side because there's more than just one piece of seaweed in the ocean. And now I'm going to add some abiotic factors. I'm going to add some sand and some rocks. Ooh, I think I'm going to put a little rock right here. Just change things up a little bit since it is my third time doing this. Okay, so I've got some abiotic factors. And I've got water, of course. So I could color this in blue. But I need some other biotic factors. I'm going to put some little pieces of microscopic bacteria floating in the water. Because people don't think about bacteria. But bacteria is totally living. And now I'm going to add my fish. I'm going to have a school of fish. Swimming around. That's good. Ooh, and now I'm going to add my favorite part. So I'm imagining a big fish called Biff because I want to make my drawing somewhat fun for me. Biff's not actually a real species. No, these really are, I guess. But Biff is an angry fish. He's a big predator, and he's angry because he's got a massive lower bite, and he's chasing the other fish. I'll even put little waves behind him. There we go. So that's my ecosystem. Whoop, sorry about that. I've got living and non-living factors. My non-living factors is the ground, the rock, the water. My living factor is going to be the seaweed, the little fish, the big fish, and the bacteria. Now, the next word we're going to come across is something called community. When scientists talk about the community of an ecosystem, they're talking about just the living things. So in this case, I'm going to draw a picture of only the living things. I'm going to color it in here in a bit. But I'm not going to color it in in the water because the water is a non-living thing. I'm going to draw my fish again because they're, they're living things. I'm not drawing my ground. I'm not drawing my rocks because those are all non-living parts. They're part of what we call the physical environment. They're abiotic. My bacteria gets to be there because it's still living. And of course, Biff. I'm Biff. I'm upset because I've got a big lower bite. Yes, I like to make voices when I draw, but it adds to the fun. You should try it. Kind of looks like a large piranha, right? Okay, so we've got the ecosystem, abiotic and biotic parts, ecosystem. Now we have the community. It's just all the biotic parts, all the living parts. Now you can break up a community into individual populations. The populations is all of one type of species in that ecosystem. So in this case, I'm going to use the fish. And I'm going to draw them. Sorry, Biff, you're getting left out. Even though I love drawing you, Biff, I'm keeping you out of this one. So there's my population. All right. So a population is all of one type of species in an ecosystem. And all the populations make up the community. And the community plus the physical environment makes up the ecosystem. And then there's a bunch of ecosystems in the biosphere. See how we're building things up? But now we're going to go one level smaller. You're like, how can we go smaller than a population? Well, what about just one? An individual. And I'm going to call this guy Herman. And he's actually going to be a happy fish. Why not? Have a little fun with it, right? It's your creation. And this is called a single organism. Or what some scientists like to say, individual. All right, and there we have it. This is how ecosystems, small like a drop of water or big like an ocean, kind of are organized in our world. From the small single organism of one, one type of species, one individual, to a population, which is all of one type of species in an ecosystem, to a community, which is all of the populations plus a physical environment. Sorry, backtrack. The community is just all of the populations. Then you have all the populations plus a physical environment, and that makes your ecosystem. And there's a really cool memory technique that I hope I remember to teach in class. You have all of your populations or your community plus your physical environment make up your ecosystem. And your community is made up of different populations, okay? So kind of using your hands can help you remember it as well. Whoa, my third time. I hope this one sticks. So thanks so much for joining me. If you have questions or you're confused about anything, please drop in and Zoom me and we can talk things out during my office hours. 
Other than that, your job now, color it and make it look beautiful. And don't forget to put in your table of contents too with the correct title. So thanks so much for joining me. See you in class.